elders will take 144,000 perfect beings here up and they will reside in the Crystal City for a thousand years to be taught by what you refer to as extraterrestrials or the masters who have been visiting the pyramids for thousands of years. And that thousand year period can be a duration of either a thousand by your time or a thousand by their time. By that I mean when you break the speed of light which is necessary to get out of Earth's atmosphere and we know light travels 186,272 feet per second. Mm -hmm. When you break the speed of light, time starts to slow up at a certain point. So to travel intergalactically from one part of a galaxy to the next, you would not lose a second. In fact, you can become younger when you arrive there. The same way you can travel from one side of your planet to the next and be behind time. You can leave on Thursday and arrive there on Wednesday the same week. Your father? Mm -hmm. That's because of a time belt here. That's one law of time. There, galactically, the solar system has a time belt by distance. When you break a certain speed, then you reverse in time. Meaning that when Nabi Musa, alayhi salatu wasalam, Moses, mm -hmm. left from Mount Mor with the aid of the angels and went on to Malakut, which is referred to in the Quran as the heavens, Samawat of Allah. When he went there, by the time he got to the other side, he was the same exact age, one day, which would have taken a thousand years of earth time to get that far. Because, like I said, light travels at 186,272 feet per second. Right. And a light year there with times 365 would be 5 trillion miles away. This particular galaxy alone, Terra, to another side, it can take a thousand years of your time, which means Musa Alayhi salatu would have became a thousand years old by the time he got to the destination. You mm -hmm. see? Mm -hmm. But when he breaks speed, when he arrives, he's the exact same age. When he returned, him and Elijah, to Jesus, to meet him, they were still the same age, though Elijah had left over 4,000 years before him, and Moses another 4,000 and came back at Jesus' time another two. You see what I'm saying? So there's a time belt. It depends on where you are. And I chose you because, I'll give you a perfect example. If you look from Seattle, Washington to Florida, the higher you get, the smaller it becomes. Until it moves from miles to yards to inches to fractions of an inch until the United States becomes a dot. Mm -hmm. So the distance it would take mentally to travel from Seattle, Washington to Florida is, is less than a second. Then, the higher you go, it's so short the distance that you can't conceive it because you merely see a dot. But you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yes. So, there's different time belts depending on which angle you're looking from. So, the answer to your question is, like it says in the scripture, a thousand years could be one day and one day could be like hundred thousand years. It depends on where that spirit is going. And now, in the view of these children, they're talking about a thousand year period, which will give y'all the 7,000th year, because the devil's reign is up in the 6,000th year, which is really the 2,000th year of this new form calendar that he made, because from canon of the Torah down to Isa el Messiah, Jesus the Messiah, was 4,000 years, you see? Mm -hmm. And then Jesus the Messiah became the year one, which is an obvious contradiction, because they say 1 B.C., and then number 2 is 2 A.D. So either Jesus died at the age of 2 or somebody made a mistake in their calendar. Because if it's B.C. before Christ, and then A.D. Anno Dominus after Christ on 2, then there's something wrong. Okay? Mm -hmm. But let's move on. At number 1, the year 1 started one of the new Christian calendar. With 4,000 years added on that, we'd now be in the year 5,000, right? Right. 987, correct? Yes. Leaving us how much before 2,000? Uh, how much before 6,000, for that matter? Now listen, if this is 1,900... About 13... Uh, and 87 yeah. year, right? How many more would make it 2,000? 
13. That's right. So now, you are at the end of the devil's 2,000 year, which is equivalent to 6,000 year from his Adam. And his Adam was canon in Noah's time with the one with the curse of leprosy, which made him albino or white in complexion as found in the books of Leviticus 13 and 14 when they received the curse. Mm -hmm. His rule is up. Like Elijah Muhammad was telling people, his rule is up in the year 6,000, which starts 1,000 before the seventh day of creation is complete. Can you understand that? Yeah, understand. Which gives you one more thousand year to prepare before the time allotted to humane beings is through. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. This is from the people changing. The whole emotional state of black people has changed from familyism, as you would have it, to individualism. Everything is about themselves, which makes them more accessible to drugs, because drugs is a personal experience. I don't care if you're in a crowd of 20 people. The moment you inhale crack or inject heroin, you are then an individual for the moment. The stimulant is individual. There are 50 people in a room taking the drugs. Each one becomes an individual. We have now become, like the devil, attracted to our individualism and lost our tribal and community involvement. We have once were tribal people, and that meant that when you people are in that, like in that room out there, in the newcomer's class, there's people there sitting there that won't even look at each other. Won't even interact with each other emotionally. They'll come in this class and sit in here from 1 o'clock until 6 and don't even, at the end of the class, walk up and say, well, because we all have the same interests, but the fact that we're here, what's your name? My name is this and I'm reading such and such a book and so and so, where do you live at? Maybe we can interact and communicate and help each other. Everybody sitting in there is an individual. They want to God what knowledge they can for their self to either convince themselves to come in or wait for the mistake that they'll never find so they don't have to come in. Because all these people are sitting there hoping one thing he can't answer. You'll never find the question that can't be answered. I've been doing this for more years than your great-grandmothers were born. And I've been asked every question you all can imagine. So if you came here to hope I can't answer the question, you're in for a big letdown. So you might as well get prepared. And so they, but they will not interact with each other. They're sitting there, they won't even look at each other at times. They won't smile at each other. We come in, we have this frown on our face when we're on the subway. We have this frown on our face when we walk down the street. We have this frown on our face when we get to our jobs. We have to learn to interact with each other and learn to care for each other. With this absence of community or tribal relationship, we are a tribe, you know. Without this tribal tie and without this tribal relationship, there's an absence of, what do you call, soul. And then the new generation of young kids, you look at the new generation and look at the way they dance, the way they move, what they call hip hop. It's all off beat, all off timing. All this rap stuff they're doing is out of the pocket as they have it. In music, you have, music is mathematics. You have whole notes, quarter notes, half notes, sixteen. You have a whole bunch of things interacting at the same time. You come to find out that a lot of people, the new generation of people, they don't have this. They are creating a, a kind of art form of music that is maliciously off the beat and out of timing. You follow? This is done by the devil. We've never had a kind of music that the white people can do. But nowadays, you have all these black people saying, wow, they sound black. It's that black people don't sound black anymore. They have taken and crossed over to white music, which made it possible for all these different groups to look like they're doing what we're doing. That has been done purposely. There is no more black music. You've given up your type of music and came over to his because he created all kinds of computers in the music industry so he could have click systems and digital machines for drumming and stuff that would give him beat. And then, if you didn't take your music and sync it to his BPMs or beats per minute, then your record wouldn't get played. So what happened is black people who would go into a studio and just create an emotional vibe and call it soul music had to adjust their music to computerize equipment. Learn drum sets and rolling drum sets and 
emulators and stimulate all these type of uh, advanced equipment. But in the process, they give up their soul. And then they learn to sing on that beat. And along with that beat, it's going tick, 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 tick. Then the white man can come along and emulate you by not only getting the ticks that you put in your computer by just programming it, but then you can listen to where you go, how you vamp, and how you go off the beat, and set his ticks on that too. And then he gets three tick machines going, and then you come and say, this white guy sounds black. Yeah, but you see him in a condition where if you walked up and said, just start humming out some beautiful rhythm, he couldn't do it. So what he's done is he transposed our people from our music, soul music, into his music. Now the whole music industry is playing his music. And now they look like they got soul, and our new kids have went into a new thing. It's the absence of music, thus for the absence of art form, and so you find black people are losing their souls. And remember, that in the 23rd Psalm, that David, who was playing the harp, had his soul restored out of that. When he said, he restored my soul, remember, he was sitting up there on a hill, singing a psalm and playing a harp. When he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restored ruhku or nafsahu, in, this, in the proper translation, in Arabic they have nafs, or in Hebrew nafish, for his spirit was restored. Something that we as black people are giving up. Don't let anyone tell you the deen of Islam relates to music. That in the deen of Islam there is no music. This is a lie. This is something that white Arabs create because they have no soul. The mutasawaf or the Sufi set up the dhikr circles and a dhikr ta'heed Allah. The adhan that the Muslims call for prayer put by the mu'adhan is singing tajweed and tartil of Quran al Karim is music, it's singing. The angels sing the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night. It's these white Arabs who have pulled music out of our, because they knew that was us. And that's what, the, and they insult you when they say, and Bilal radiallahu anhu was the greatest of all the Mu'adhan. Correct? You notice in Islam they say Bilal was the greatest caller of prayer? Because he's a black man, they imply that we're good for music and singing again. And the Quran does not say anywhere to not listen to music and to not be joyful. Anywhere. It does not forbid rocks dancing, and it does not forbid people to be Mohammedan singing. It does not. These are things that came out of men outside of Mashab, outside of the Quran. They added their opinions in. You follow? And music is a very powerful thing for us as a people. We need it. Because it's part of our tribal weight. And we've done it since when we were Ben Israel back to Torah. All the way down in the Isa ibn Maryam, Ba'aduhu ila Rasulullah Muhammad Akhatim MBM. Ila al 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 an. All the way to now, we have music. Okay? No. Don't let them take our soul. They've already got our children. This is the Messiah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is backed up by the Quran. 2, chapter 2, verse 4, chapter 2, verse 38, chapter 2, verse 41, chapter 2, verse 87, etc. If this is so, why do you even use quotes from the New Testament other than that that is contained in the revelation of Isa ibn Maryam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? All right, now, if you read on to other books, like you'll see that I've asked that question especially about Paul's books. Why do we use them? And that is because we're in a society where if, if I took the New Testament and translated it to Arabic and gave a new translation to it, you know what the Christians would say when I try to teach them? That's your Bible, that's not mine. They force you to have to use their King James Version of the Bible because they've been so messed up in the head that if you go away from that, like when the Jehovah's Witness start teaching them, they say right away, that's their Bible. And that's what the Christians will say whenever you're talking to them. Let me see if that's in my Bible that way. You follow? Mm -hmm. So now, the revelation when talking to Muslims who are mu'minun or mu'minati, the faithful, 
they should adhere to all the texts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down. And Al Injil, which was given the 22 books given to John for Jesus through the angel, are the ones Muslims should adhere to. But when it comes down to his Sahaba, then you have Jesus' Hadith. Jesus' Hadith are the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That is the same thing that so called Sunni Muslims are putting equivalent to Muhammad's hadith when they read about Bukhari, Shafi, Maliki, Muslim, and Talmud. These are writings of men about things that a specific prophet did. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John wrote stories about what Jesus did, exchanged letters about their involvements in propagation, and things that they saw him do, or things that he did not object to. And then when they put their books together, when they quoted him verbatim, Instead of like in El Islam, where they took that out and called it the sayings of Muhammad, you see, in the Bible, they just painted it in red and said, these red parts of your Bible are what Jesus said in those books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John as recorded by his disciples. And we find that many times those books will differ in numbers of people, in places, in times, and names. But the Injil itself, the book of Revelation stays factual and precise to the end. You follow what I'm saying? So now when teaching people who have been indoctrinated, if I was in India, in other words, I would use the Bhagavad Vita and the Upanishads to explain to those people how they are being misused by them. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And then take them to the book necessary to straighten that up, which was the Bayina, which we know is Al-Quran, Min Allah Ta'ala. So what you have to do first is you have to cuddle a baby, breastfeed a baby, then teach him how to hold the bottle. You follow? So what I do is I talk to them through the scriptures that they understand first. The reason why the Sunni Muslims cannot progress at all in this country.